I gotta be honest with you, it's really frustrating for me to watch a lot of people post stupid comments online about your hydraulic brakes. Taking your bikes to a bike shop to have them adjust or bleed your brakes. Are you fucking kidding me? There's nothing complicated about this bike that you should be taking any bicycle, mountain bike, cruiser bike, beach bike, e-bike to a shop. It's all easy to do. I understand your reluctance because your hands are built like this with a game controller. You don't know how to use tools. You don't understand mechanical things. So as a boomer, <laughs> I'm gonna show you just how silly, ridiculous, easy your hydraulic brakes are for you to work on it. Never again do I wanna see y'all putting your bikes in a shop. All right, let's go, let's do this. Let's get this done. It's not a rocket science. The easy things to understand about your Tektro brakes. Four millimeter hex wrench. This allows you to adjust the lever up and down according to your personal preferences. If you accepted the alignment adjustment that came with it from the factory, well, you need to change that because you can make it better. Next, two millimeter right here. That's your reach adjustment. That's how far your hands, whether you got big man hands like me or you got little girly hands like Toga Harris, turn this to the left and it brings it in. Turn this to the right and it brings the reach out. These are personal preferences based on your own personal size, hands, grip, gloves, whatever you ride with. The next thing, and there's no adjustment for it. I just want you to understand what's going on inside your brake lever. The wiring, which is your engine cutoff and brake light, goes in right here above the hydraulic line. It is basically a magnet sensor. So basically, you got a magnet in here that's a normally closed contact. When you squeeze a lever, it opens it, which cuts the brakes. This right here, this nut, if you unscrew this, you can pull the wiring out. There's really no need to do that unless you're doing modifications or change outs or whatever. But to do that, at the bottom of the complete assembly, there's a two, two millimeter set screw. You just need to back this off. What this does is this is biting down onto the threads to keep this from unscrewing. And you're never gonna get this off unless you back this off. Once you get that off and backed off, you can take this nut out all the way and the wiring will come out. This wire is just for mock-up purposes to show you what the wire looks like going in there. I don't know where my sensor is for this. Now, for the hydraulic line, there's your caliper at the other end of it. We're not gonna be messing with that today. Should you need to pull the cable for whatever reason, this right here is nothing but a strain relief to keep this from bending or kicking up, and it covers up the nut which takes this out. Once you remove this, unscrew that, this is what you're looking at on the inside of the brake uh, master cylinder. This goes inside, there's a little itty bitty, tiny is all get up O-ring on there. And all this compresses in there, makes you for a nice, tight, leak-free fit. All right, let's take a look at the brake hydraulic cables on our bikes. So this is a brand new replacement cable I bought off of Amazon. I needed it to lengthen my cables. As you can see, the hole on the inside is very small. It's 
about two millimeters. This is what the ends of your cables look like right here. This right here is called an acorn. And this little thing that's sticking inside of the hydraulic line is called a barb. This is the acorn. This is the barb that goes in there. Look at that little tiny hole. That's all the brake fluid that's going in there. Very little, very small amounts. Boomers are rebels. We don't take anybody's word for shit. So all of the gossip and nonsense that's on the internet telling you that you need a special tool to cut the hydraulic line and a special tool to insert the barb into the line is nonsense. This is what I use. Just a wire cutter. Watch me cut the line. Perfectly good cut. Nothing wrong with that. All right, a little bit of frayed line there. What do we do? Frayed line is gone. You do not need a special tool to insert the barb into the end of the cable. I'm not gonna insert it for you because I'm saving that should I need it. But all you do is push the barb in there and then what I did, I just pushed it down on a hard wooden surface like that until it went in. It's that easy. Don't believe all this nonsense that you need a special $12 tool for a one-time use. We can get by without it. Now on to the good part. The hydraulics, the master cylinder, bleeding the brakes, pressuring the brakes, adding fluid to it. Before you do anything on the brakes, you need to make sure that your master cylinder is level. Left to right, front to back. Once you have it level, a T15 wrench is what you need to open the bleed port. It's a T15 Torx. Now once you get that out, there is a little tiny O-ring in there. Sometimes it comes out on the screw, sometimes it doesn't, but you need to get that out now. And what I like to do is I will go ahead and insert it back onto the screw where it belongs so it will be ready and good to go when we put this all back together. Here is where it's important that you own a bleed kit. This is what's going to go on here for all of your bleeding and filling and burping procedures. Got a little pop in valve there to stop the fluid from flowing and leaking. You are going to want that and need that. That'll be another video. This is a Easy MTB. I'll have a link to that in the description, so don't ask for that in the comments, people. For most of us, that will be as far as we ever need to go deep into the master cylinder. But I wanna show y'all what all's going on. You need to learn this shit. To take the master cylinder cover off, we are looking at a T10 Torx wrench and two screws. Let's take those two screws off. No O-ring on this. And you will see why in a brief second why there is no O-ring on there. Another screw off, same size so you can't mix those up. Now, this lifts off. Look at that. There is your hydraulic fluid. And here is the gasket for that hydraulic fluid. Close up of the master cylinder cover. Gasket just comes off like that. This is just mineral oil. You know what mineral oil is? It's the same thing as baby oil is, except baby oil has got a fragrance to it. There is absolutely no reason to buy an $8 bottle of four ounces of mineral oil 
brake fluid. There is absolutely zero difference between mineral oil brake fluid and Johnson & Johnson baby oil. The Johnson & Johnson baby oil has a fragrance. This has a tint. This is $8 for four ounces. That's $2 an ounce. If you are paying $2 an ounce for gasoline, guess how much a gallon of gas would cost you? This is ridiculous. Gasoline, the oil's got to be drilled from thousands of feet below the surface of the earth, trucked, piped to a refinery. You know what refineries do? They make gasoline. They're very expensive to build. They're very expensive to run. And yet, you're paying 2 to $3, depending on where you live. California, maybe $4, a gallon of gas. And this, I, don't even have, I can't even do the math in my head right now, what a gallon of this would cost you. It's wrong. The processing and refining for this is a ripoff. Don't buy this. I made the mistake. Please don't do it. Okay, back to the master cylinder. Cover comes off. There's your gasket, that comes off. And there is the juice. That is your green overpriced brake fluid, mineral oil, baby oil. There is a hole, it's not too big, between here and there. You got two reservoirs, they equal out each other no matter what you do and so the fill for it is over there on the left side there's absolutely nothing inside here or there that is serviceable I just wanted to open this up so you would not be afraid to open it up yourself should you want to or need to and to show you how all this stuff works okay before you put all this back together now would be a good time to fill to the top with more mineral oil. Gasket goes on, the cover goes on. Then we reassemble it just like we disassembled it. This is mineral oil, remember? Same thing as baby oil. It's good for your hands. If I see Another one of you wearing black nitrile surgical gloves. I'm going to shoot you in your fucking head. Now that we got it topped off, it'll probably be a little bit high because this rubber part of the gasket that goes down in there is going to take up some volume and that oil may tend to leak out. No big deal. It's not going to hurt anything. There's nothing over here that that oil is going to get on and ruin. We got our gasket back on. Now to put the cover back on, hold it in place. Make sure your holes are free of gasket material. And then start your screws. Torx wrench. Get that first one snug. Go to the other side. Get it snug, put a little more tight on it, a little more tight on that. Feel it, looks good. Now, time for that uh, bleed screw to go in because our reservoir is full. I can tell by looking down the hole, I can see juice down there. You're actually at a good level here. Put the bleed screw down. You'll feel when that's nice and tight, give it a little bit extra oomph. All this nonsense about torque wrenches and torque values. Man, use your common sense. I know you've got some. Now, get you a towel. Wipe all this down. Nice dry towel. You don't need an alcohol prep. This is not surgery. This stuff is not going to hurt anything. And it's actually good for your hands. Now. Look at this. Check your pressure. Look around the edges. If there's anything that's not properly tightened down, you're going to see some hydraulic oil leaking out. Notice 
I've got no hydraulic oil leaking out. Everything I've done here has been while this was level, I've not lost any pressure. If anything, I've gained some pressure because I've added fluid to this and I've tightened everything up. It's gravity fed going down. No air bubbles got into the system because everything was full. It's very simple, people. You do not need to ever take your bicycle to a bicycle shop. Nice. Very simple once you understand what's going on. That's all there is in here. I've got another video where I dissected the caliper uh, a little bit by accident, a little bit by not. I'll put that link in the upper right corner right now. All right, man. I think that's it. That should explain everything that you need to know about how these things work. Now stay tuned and I will give you videos on bleeding the system and burping the brakes to get more pressure, more fluid in here. All right, man. That's it. I'm out of here. See ya.